I do a lot of uh, farm succession uh, transition planning. So although I don't do tax returns or 706 forms or state tax returns, I do uh, advise with the accountants to try to get the farmers in the best position to minimize their exposure to taxes. So um, in doing that and looking at the transition costs, I think taxes can be a cost to that. Uh, there's a couple things that I guess from my standpoint that I hope that the, the legislature holds on to. And from the proposals we've seen today, there's, there's not a lot of detail, but I'll, I'll hit on a couple of the things we're talking about. Um, one of them is obviously the estate tax, and farmers have been greatly concerned about the estate tax. And although the numbers that you see are 2% of the people um, apply or, or fall under those exemptions today, I will tell you that uh, full-time farmers, and I work with a lot of full-time farmers or full-time agribusinesses, and a majority of those without some detailed planning are going to have a taxable estate or without multiple members in the family being involved are going to have a taxable estate. It's, it's just the nature of the beast with the number of assets that they have and the values of land where they're at. So I, although I did, the, the proposal today looks like they want to uh, eventually eliminate estate tax, which is something I think we would all support, I do think that the exemptions need to be increased and it looks like uh, the Congress is taking note of that and, and has proposed to possibly double exemptions. Whether it ends up that way or not, I would be in favor of that. That would at least give us more room to do some better, better estate tax planning. Um, the other thing that we, we have to look at is some of the tax considerations for farmers. And again, as these farms grow and, and, and full-time farmers grow with the amount of revenue they receive, you know, there's a debate about cash accounting versus accrual accounting. Uh, and, uh, and where that number cutoff should be and whether we should all convert over uh, to accrual. And I can tell you that uh, with the number of inventories, inventories that people have of cattle and corn and, and potatoes and, and the like, sugar beets, uh, if we go to an accrual-based system, we're going to have some huge, huge changes and probably negative repercussions in the farm world. So I hope that uh, as they look at the income tax side of things, we keep the cash accounting for farmers and, and keep it so that we can uh, adjust that dollar figure as long as you're a full-time farmer and, uh, and stay out of uh, having to be an accrual-based system. You know, the other thing that we all look at is the depreciation and keeping those numbers up. I think depreciation has been a, a, a segment that has helped keep the economy going for the manufacturers and equipment dealers. So we obviously like to keep the 179 and bonus uh, depreciations at levels that, that are workable. Um, there's some proposals about different expenses and deductions and, and uh, the family limitations and, and what they're going to do there. I, again, haven't read all the details on that, but I, I uh, hope that they'll, I think from what I've seen, it looks like we're getting some proposals that it should still be friendly to, to farmers and individuals as a whole as families. Um, you know, the estate tax proposals, again, didn't have a lot of detail either. You know, so if they do take time to get uh, a, a true elimination, uh, my hope is that we still keep a step up in basis on assets. Um, the, the step up on basis on assets for farmers is, is pretty critical uh, to help minimize uh, capital gains and some of the transfer costs when we, when we do that. The other thing that's been out there that, uh, that could get eliminated or, or altered would be the 1031 exchange rules. And, and although that's not a huge player, I, I know that a lot of farmers, uh, you know, when we get into these renewable energy resources, solar, wind, and some of these other things that may take up some of their farmland, 1031 plays a pretty good role in helping us get out of that farmland and still re re replace it with new farmland and not have a huge tax burden in the, me in the meantime. So I hope that uh, as they look at some of the nuances of the tax code that we also keep some, some form of a 1031 exchange in place. The other thing that we didn't see from the proposals that have come out today is how they want to treat uh, gifting. And, and perhaps it'll be something that we'll have unlimited gifts or, or, or a different amount of gifts. But if they do eliminate the estate tax, uh, you know, we, we need to know what our gift options are going forward. A lot of business transactions and business succession plans uh, are done through the, the means of gifting and discounts on businesses. Um, so we want to make sure that we have a, a gifting option available that allows us to move uh, shares of an LLC or membership interest or corporation uh, at a significant amount to bring a, a next generation in and not have huge tax consequences with the gift. So. I didn't see anything again today from the early proposals or details that might explain what they're going to do with that, but I hope that they have some increases in the amounts for the, for the gifting and also continue uh, to allow the individuals to have discounts on closely held businesses for the gifts of, of membership interest. Uh, that's, that's critical for all these farms that are trying to bring people in and, and it's critical to move things over. You know, what, what people don't understand is that sometimes the transfers take time and our tax rules and, and our, our uh, tax code is sometimes a prohibitor of, of getting that done. And, and in the estate planning world, there's also other considerations that we have. And 
some of that is in Medicaid and, and some of these other types of issues. And uh, if we can't move the stuff fast enough, we get back into another problem when people uh, get into the elderly age and need to go to a, an assisted living um, of how to pay for it and what to do with those assets that they still own. So all of those things hurt, uh, hurt or put a damper on our farms and, and, and small to large farms. All of these people have to be considering these issues and uh, to, to get it transferred and keep it operational. Thank <music> you.